Right, good morning, Alistair. Um, we're here at the Smens restaurant, and um, it's a nice, gloomy morning, so we had a great idea to create a, a wonderful summer dish using um, some prime British ingredients, mainly the fish. Um, but before we come on to what we're making today, I'll introduce you to Kevin, our group head chef, uh, this gentleman here. So Hi. this is Kevin Hill, so he, he'll be um, prov providing you with some support. I'm not quite sure how much, but he'll be here anyway. So you, you can carry on and, and chop some onions. Thank, so, thank you very much, Andre. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much. So, right, on to more important, more pressing matters. With the ingredients, what we've got this morning, we've got some fantastic sea bream, and we've picked this up from John at Clayton's in Hartford Market. Um, it's wild, so it's not farmed, and it's, um, it's uh, picked up from British Shoreline, and it's in season at the moment. That being the main ingredient, um, it's then um, complemented with some lovely wild Chichester clams, um, which are fresh. Uh, you only need them for two days, after two days get rid of them um, and they must, uh, you must make sure that they're, um, that they're opening after being closed when you're cooking and then the, uh, I suppose the, the, the added um, styles to the dish, we've got some fresh capers uh, which were in salt, very small, lovely, black olives, fresh garlic, some thyme, cherry tomatoes, uh, some shallots and the whole thing is bound together with a lovely anchovy and that I suppose is the secret ingredient here even though we want to shout about the Chichester clams and the wild bream um, the anchovy that we get from Sicily in a tin is absolutely gorgeous and it's what gives that broth or the sauce that comes with this bream something very special. Um, sustainability and, and sourcing and provenance have um, become really uh, major issues today um, and there are those uh, which jump on, 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 the, uh, on the wagon and they do it because it's, it's quite trendy and fashionable. Um, but um, there are those which have been campaigning for uh, trust in the supplier and knowing the supply chain um, for a very long time. We at Lusmans have, have been um, quietly uh, massive supporters um, and in our own way campaigners of the importance of knowing where your food comes from. Uh, our fish is British. Um, it's sustainable, 100%, um, and we rate very highly as a restaurant um, that, that, uh, that champions that very fact. Right, so um, we now get over to the clams, and before we start cooking the dish and building the dish with regards to cooking the fish and putting the various ingredients together, we've got our lovely fresh clams here. You'll find that 99% of the time they arrive closed and tight, and they come in a little net, and the ones we get at the restaurant are little cards that demonstrate where they're from, the providence, and the safety of them, because obviously you're dealing with a live fish here. Um, the best thing to do is to put them in cold water um, to allow them uh, to sort of filter um, some of the sand out of the shells and also work out which ones are bad, uh, which ones are dead, and which ones are no good. So, when they're in the water, if they open up, you give them a little tap. If it closes, happy days, you put it to one side, you can use it. If it doesn't close, it means quite simply, it's dead. <coughs> and that means um, we throw it away. Otherwise, we will kill a few of our customers. So we have to be very, very clear about that simple rule. So, Kevin, um, the, 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 the job of, uh, of, of uh, you this afternoon, this morning, sorry, is to get these clams uh, washed, filtered, and make sure we don't have any dead ones. Please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, and that's the sort of uh, technique and philosophy and the culture that farmers markets um, are trying to once again put at the very front of food and the, uh, the politics of food. And we're not saying supermarkets are dreadful, although my view is buy it somewhere that you can speak to somebody, you understand that they appreciate what they're selling, there's a genuine passion about it. And most importantly, these people you talk to, whether it's foxholes with their beef, they are the farmer. They are the people um, in the field, on the field, uh, with the field, uh, coming to your doorstep. So trust these people. Uh, so those ingredients are there for presentation only. Here are some we, we did earlier. So we've got our tomatoes, we've got our capers, and anchovy, and olives and shallots, and some shallots, uh, and some, uh, sorry, clams, just clams, that Kevin did a good job of earlier, with our fantastic thyme. The only thing we need to worry about cutting is the tomatoes. So, I mean, there's no issue here. You just cut it down the middle. And the whole point of this is, they have been washed, even though the stalks have been left on, need to work on the staff here, um, is that we need to chop them in half, put them to one side, and they'll be thrown in the pan. Next thing with a glass of garlic, cut off a little bit of the end, and then with a, with a bigger knife than this, we slice it nice and thin in making sure that we don't cut our hand off, 
because you want the garlic to be as thin as possible in order that it cooks very, very quickly and you don't char it. You don't want to get burnt or dark brown. Light brown is the color we're looking for. And that pretty much is all the cutting we're going to do in regards to this dish. Um, again, with regards to pork, you know, there's a lot of talk about red tractor, there's a lot of talk about, there's a lot of talk about different gradings, different um, badges, uh, and different standards. It gets very confusing and from my perspective, it's very hard sometimes to uh, be able to distill exactly in simple terms what's right for the consumer. But again, you know, we work with very simple rules. You know, the, the pork we have is pretty much, it's, uh, it's organic, and it's not organic, it's high for welfare, free range, it's local uh, to the home counties. We work with the farmer, he sells us his product. We buy it, and we have been for eight years. Right, we'll get ourselves a nice heavy uh, steel, um, heavy pot and pan. You can use a frying pan at home, it really doesn't matter. This works for us in the restaurant. Uh, the first part of it, again, as I said earlier, very, very simple. We throw in uh, a bit of olive oil. The two ingredients we didn't talk about initially was some good house white. You can use de-alkalized de de white if you prefer, um, or old wine that was good to drink a few days ago and you think you can throw it away. Don't worry about throwing it away. Leave it um, in the kitchen and use it a couple of weeks later, as I often do. So we've got our olive oil. We've got the uh, white wine that we spoke about. Um, we put a little bit of white wine, uh, olive oil, sorry, inside. Um, up to you, can use rape seed, which is very, very successful at the moment. Can use butter, which is fantastic for taste. We at the, at the restaurant will use a combination of butter and olive oil, simply because the olive oil will stop the butter burning, um, and the butter will give uh, the ingredients a little bit more taste. Um, and we throw in our shallots, and that's what we've got. The shallots, slight, slightly uh, diced with a bit of olive oil onto the pot plate. But it is about high welfare, local, knowing who produces the meat, the fish, the chicken, the pork, um, and understanding that there is a passion, a knowledge, and awareness that you probably don't get sometimes at the supermarket. And that's where I choose to eat, and that's where we choose to buy our food for listeners. Right. Right, um, the shallots going very brown very, very quickly. Um, it's the first dish we've cooked this morning, um, so uh, you want to you add your ingredients in very, very quickly at this point. So before the shallots go too brown, we add in our garlic. And remember that fantastic ingredient we had earlier, which was the anchovy, which adds the stock. You put that in there and leave it to rest <coughs> inside the pan for about 30 seconds. The ingredients and the volume of ingredients which we're using today are all on the website and at Lustmans in terms of how to make the dish. And that needs to be in there only for about 30 seconds. We don't want to char the garlic, we don't want to burn um, the shallots, otherwise the whole dish is ruined. Finally, we throw in our cherry tomatoes, adds a bit of sweetness and some acidity to the dish. The capers, which are glorious with any fish dish, and generally as a rule, the smaller the caper the better. And finally, our olives, it's a fresh thyme. Don't worry about taking the leaves off. Leave the stems on. And the beer de resistance is our Chichester clams. So sit on there. Now, quite dry. Need some uh, white wine. Bit of white wine. Lovely sizzle. That now creates pretty much a steaming process that you would have with Moore's Marnier or a Vongolet. You will leave the clams in there now for a good sort of minute and a half. We don't want to kill anybody. Fantastic these clams will be, they need to be cooked for about a minute to a minute and a half. Very quickly, very fresh, very hot. So Alistair, we've got our sea bream here. Um, very simply, we've asked our fishmonger to scale it for us. That's just basically brushing a knife across the top of the fish. Um, he's pin boned it, and again, that's again a very simple process for a fishmonger. Not so simple for people like me, and that means he's hooked out all the large bones. It doesn't mean it's bone free, it is a piece of fish. However, it means most of the bones have gone, and Kevin did a lovely job this morning smartening up the, the, the fillet by just cutting off the edges and a bit of the fat off the side. So we put a bit of oil. Now, um, there's, there's, there's various ways you can cook it. Um, the easiest way at home is to cook it side, uh, skin side down on a frying pan. Um, and as with our fish griddle, you'll notice that it sizzles up, um, it contracts, it dehydrates, and you want to leave it really on its skin side down for 75% of the time of the cooking. In this case, it would be about, I would say, three or four minutes. 
Right, we're at the tail end, pardon the pun, of uh, this fantastic fish dish. We've just thrown the clams in, they're starting to open up. Remember, if they close, discard them, no good. And uh, you can add seasoning, salt and pepper. I mean, my opinion is we've got a very fat, juicy anchovy in there. And as it steams away, we've also seasoned the, 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 the fillet of the sea, uh, sea breed, which is, which is working away now on the, on the fish griddle. So, this probably doesn't need any salt and pepper in my opinion, but if you want to at home, over to you. Right, two or three minutes, it, it, we're now ready for the dish. I think uh, Kevin's finished chopping one onion uh, whilst he's taking us to cook the dish. We're now ready to go. Um, and as Kevin picks up our sea bream, we can, we can provide you with what I feel is a super dish um, any time of year. The funny thing is, is that sea bream is more in season at the tail end of spring and, uh, and during the autumn time, rather than being a totally summer dish, which is uh, contrary to what people would, would usually expect. So, Spoon out of the pocket. Let's feather out the wonderful clams, cherry tomatoes, and that all-important anchovy. And that gorgeous sea bream that was just being made by Kevin. Now ready. So there we have it. And what better to enjoy it with a glass of white wine with your favourite colleague and I was going to say Kevin but after dropping only one onion all afternoon it's got to be for the man behind the camera so thank you Alistair, that's for you and that's for me, cheers. Cheers Andre. <laughs>